This episode's writing tip comes from Derek Sivers. Derek Sivers is someone that I first heard, I believe, on Tim Ferriss's web uh, podcast, The Tim Ferriss Show. And he has an interesting background. He's a writer. Uh, he's also a musician. And back in the 90s, he started a company called CD Baby, where it was essentially this website where he used to load his CDs and try to like sell them himself, like online. So this is late 90s, 98, 99, you know, early internet days. And it was working for him in terms of, you know, being able to sell his own music. And some of his friends, which were also musicians, asked if he could sell theirs. And he wound up like building this website to like over a hundred million dollars in sales. And he wound up selling the company and the rest is history. But he was just, he was an interesting guy, interesting uh, conversation. I liked his like energy and like outlook or like philosophy on life, quote unquote. So I started started following him. I subscribed to his newsletter and this specific post that I'm going to share with you folks is from his website or is from his newsletter, but is on his website rather. And he has a section of his website where he breaks down books and writes like bullet point notes and like takeaways. And there were a bunch on here that I found interesting and definitely worth sharing. And these are his notes on a book called Writing Well by William Zinser. And this specific post, as always, I will link to in the episode notes for your reading and viewing pleasure. But here's a few of the bullets that I wanted to share. Establish a daily schedule and stick to it. That's definitely a across the board staple and words of wisdom that you hear from every writer worth their salt. Strip every sentence to its cleanest components. Clear our heads of clutter. Clear thinking becomes clear writing. The Elements of Style, a book every writer should read once a year. Now, The Elements of Style, written by Strunk and White, if I remember correctly, was a book that my freshman English teacher, shout out to Miss Gitlitz, who is in part responsible for me ever even thinking that I could write something that anyone on the planet would ever find worth reading. And I acknowledge her in the acknowledgement section of each of my books, both in Make Way For You, Tips For Getting Out Of Your Own Way, and my first in the series time travel novel, Fractal. And I will do so in all books that I write moving forward. But she assigned us this book, which I still have to this day. It's a very thin, can't be more than 50 pages, very thin, small, gray book called The Elements of Style by Strunk and White. And it's very much so within that like second bullet point of stripping every sentence to its cleanest components. It's about getting rid of every single word you don't need to get your particular point across. Like, Don't get too fancy. Don't use too many adverbs. Don't use adverbs at all, I think is like rule of thumb. Things like when to use like an actual number, like the numbers, you know, written out versus the word of the number written out. Like if you're writing two o'clock, do you write T-W-O o'clock or do you write the number two o'clock? You know, like things like that. And it's definitely a book that I have revisited, but not once a year. But I'm going to heed that advice. Write in the first person is another bullet point here, which is something I actually struggle with um, in terms of point of view. I know that's like one of the, the first things that you're supposed to establish as a writer. What point of view is this story being written in? Is it first person? Is it second person? Is it omniscient narrator? etc etc but the advice here is write in the first person which is times that i've written in first person it is i think the most natural way to write but with me i do like fractal i think it's in like first person slash omniscient narrator if that's even like a real thing but whatever that's the way i wrote that story and i noticed that with a lot of my stories i wind up writing i wind up writing the way i visualize the story going in a movie or TV show. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because it's, you know, I'm not writing screenplays. I'm not writing actual movies, but the stories that I do write, whether it's a short story, whether it's a novel, I always envision them in my mind playing out as movies. So I don't know. There's that. (laughs) Another bullet point takeaway here is if it amuses you in the act of writing, put it in. It can always be taken out later. And that's definitely true. I, I put too much emphasis or, or too much 
thought behind first drafts, I think. And it's something that I've been getting better at. Heeding the words of Ernest Hemingway, who said the first draft of everything is shit. And just countless writers who always say, just get through the first draft. Just, you know, Joyce Carol Oates and Walter Mosley and Margaret Atwood, uh, Neil Gaiman, Stephen Pressfield, Stephen King. They all say just like bleed onto the page, like just like literally rush through the first draft and get to the end. Just like get the ideas out, just throw them out. Like literally doesn't have to make sense. Just fucking throw up on your page. Get through the fucking first draft. Get it out the way. Then you can go back and start actually writing but get the idea out with me there's some like or has been historically there still is some definitely still have work to do on it but paralysis by analysis where i don't know like trying to make it perfect the first time around which i guess helps in minimizing the the editing and the rewriting and shit like that after but it's like a double-edged sword right you don't want that becoming too much of the norm and then your output your body of work is non-existent but yeah, I definitely agree with that point. If it amuses you in the act of writing, put it in. It can always be taken out later. Another takeaway here is please yourself and you will also entertain the readers. Read everything aloud before letting it go into the world. That's a big one. I definitely do that. Next is your lead must capture the reader immediately and force him to keep reading. It must cajole him with freshness or novelty or paradox or humor or surprise or with an unusual idea or an interesting fact or a question so basically capture your reader's attention take special care with the last sentence of each paragraph it's the crucial springboard to the next paragraph and try to give that sentence an extra twist of humor or surprise it's pretty good and just a few more here that i wanted to share a few more tips and writes are you summarizing because you think they're too dumb to get the point that's a good one. Sometimes you underestimate the reader. You think that maybe you didn't do as good a job of like planting certain seeds. So you wind up oversharing instead of letting them connect the dots themselves, which is part of the fun of reading, right? Filling in the details of the landscape that the writer is creating for you. Of oh, these next two kind of tie back to the whole content be- behind that book the elements of style by strunk and white which is most adjectives the concept is already within the noun so prune out a bit a little sort of kind of rather quite very too and pretty much cut all those words out like you don't have to say it was very cold you can just say it was cold instead of saying something like for example i'm just thinking off the top of my head i like the blue one but i like the red one a little more you can cut out a little and still maintain 100% of the point that you're trying to get across with that sentence. I like the blue, but I like the red more. So you don't need a little. And alert the reader as soon as possible to any change in mood from the previous sentence by using words like but, yet, however, nevertheless, still, and instead. <laughs> I like this one. I like this approach. He goes, uh, a different problem in a sentence no i'm sorry a difficult problem in a sentence can be solved by simply getting rid of it so he means like in terms of like story structure if like you wrote something that it's not really working it's not really like jiving with the paragraph or it's like a cool sounding sentence which i know definitely has happened to me a cool sounding sentence or piece of dialogue that you write and it's kind of like Damn, this person wouldn't say something like that and it doesn't really go with the story but i really like the way it sounds so i'm trying to like force it in it's like that's it becoming a difficult problem just get rid of it and actually what i do with stuff like that like little like snippets and extras and stuff take it and put it in like a file of just like random whatever random thoughts and sentences and ideas to be used tbd in a different story and lastly to write better than everybody else You have to want to write better than everybody else. You must take an obsessive pride in the smallest details of your craft. Now, I don't know if I want to write better than everybody else. I'm kind of a more of a I'll do me, you do you. Write how you write, I'll write how I write kind of guy. But I 100% agree with the second piece, which is very Mamba mentality-esque of 
taking an obsessive pride in the smallest details of your craft. I'm definitely with that. And that, folks, was this episode's writing tip. Had a bunch of little tips within this writing tip from Derek Sivers and his notes on writing well by William Zinzer. And I will link to in the episode notes for you guys to definitely check it out. And if you're not interested in, interested in that book specifically, I would still encourage you to check out Derek Sivers site. He has a bunch of different books that he's broken down in a similar fashion, shared his notes on those books and they're pretty insightful. So definitely check them out. <laughs>